six o'clock by official time and then you can let it rip. I don't know. There's got to be a good thing in there somewhere. Actually, I think earbuds are out and headphones are in now. Okay, I think we're right at six o'clock, Dan. All right. Good evening, and thank you for viewing the May 25th, 2021 meeting of the Planning Commission. We are holding this meeting as a webinar in response to local efforts to reduce the spread of the COVID-19 virus. I want to start by thanking the community and visitors to Arcata and the county for their efforts to slow the spread of the COVID-19. Remember the three most important things you can do to protect yourself and others in the community are masking up, practicing social distance of six feet or more and washing your hands regularly. These fundamental acts of social responsibility will help flatten the curve. Keep yourselves and neighbors healthy and keep our businesses open. Importantly, these measures show support for frontline and essential workers that serve us daily. If you wish to make public comment during the meeting, there are two ways to do so. First, if you joined the webinar on a computer or similar device, click the raised hand icon when the commission is discussing the agenda item on which you would like to speak. When it is time for public comment on that item, the clerk will unmute you. You will have two minutes to comment. Second, if you did not log on to the webinar, you may join the meeting by phone. Call the number at the bottom of the screen. Enter meeting ID. Also at the bottom of the screen, press star nine on your phone when the commission is discussing the agenda item on which you would like to speak. Dialing star nine will let the clerk know that you would like to speak. When it is time for public comment on that item, the clerk will unmute you. You will hear a prompt that will indicate <coughs> your phone is unmuted. You will have two minutes to comment. And I'd like to call this meeting to order. Can we begin with a roll call, please? Yeah, Commissioner White. Here. Commissioner Barstow. Here. Commissioner Figueroa. Present. Commissioner Davies. I'm here. Vice Chair Mayor. Here. And Chair Taggy. Here. Thank you, Director Loya. And, yeah, and again, for the record, uh, Commissioner Visade Alcock uh, is not in attendance tonight. Okay. Um, can we move on to oral communications? Do we have anything? Um, I'm not seeing any. There's one person in attendance uh, who's here, I believe, for the matter on the agenda. Okay. Seeing none, we will close oral communications and move on to the consent calendar. And the only item on the consent calendar are the minutes from our last meeting, which was April 27th, 2021. If we don't have any corrections, then do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar? Move to approve the uh, consent calendar. Do we have a second on that? I will second. We have a motion and a second. Can we do a roll call on that item? Yeah, uh, Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Barstow. Aye. Commissioner Figueroa. Aye. And Vice Chair Mayor. Aye, yes. And Chair Tegney? Aye. Thank you. 
And I'll note that uh, Commissioner Davies um, appears to be having technical difficulties popped off for a second. So um, we'll put him as a abstention. Okay, thank you. Motion still carries. Um, hope to see you back, Scott. And now we move on to our single business item for the evening. Sorry, not business item, it's our, um, um, what are we calling this? Yeah, Public hearing. Single agenda item for adopting resolution PC 21-02, recommending formula restaurant ordinance amendments to the city council. Do we have a staff report on that? Yeah, thank you, Chair Tagney. Um, this is a, a public hearing on a proposed ordinance amending the city's formula restaurant uh, ordinance, as well as the definitions of restaurant and formula restaurant uh, to try and address the issues that were raised in the zoning interpretation that I made and brought to your body uh, recently here. Obviously, because the, um, you know, there's a gap in the regulatory framework at this point because of that zoning interpretation, uh, it's been staff's uh, intent to try and get this before the council as quickly as humanly possible. As a result, I noticed the planning commission hearing that's occurring right now here tonight, as well as the June 2nd city council hearing uh, in the same notice, anticipating that the planning commission would in fact adopt resolution PC 2102 tonight and forward that recommendation on to the city council. I want to preface this um, uh, this the beginning of the staff report and that recommendation by noting that this is in no way uh, intended to abridge the planning commission's deliberations or uh, you know authority to uh, you know to delve into as much detail as they feel like they need to before they make a recommendation. Uh, but I did want to prime the pump in the event that the planning commission is comfortable moving forward with uh, either the proposed ordinance as in the staff report tonight or if through your deliberations you can arrive at something that you'd like to recommend to the planning or to the city council rather. So I just wanted to be transparent about uh, the process. Um, we're also bringing this to the economic development committee because it does have some economic implications in the original ordinance uh, that was adopted in the early 2000s. Uh, specific findings were made about the impact of uh, the impact of the ordinance on uh, local economies. Um, and though there's not a lot of uh, discussion that I found in the record uh, as to you know, the basis for that, they certainly were uh, you know, explicit findings with regard to economics. And so we're gonna bring that to the Economic Development Committee. Okay, so with that, I've got uh, resolution PC-2102 as attachment A. And attached to that exhibit one is the proposed ordinance 1546. Um, I'll walk through just super high level what the ordinance does. First, it basically strikes 942164 of the language code, which is the current regulation regulatory framework for formula restaurants. And instead of trying to salvage that language, it was simpler just to strike it. There was enough uh, modifications that the underlying strike through um, was confused uh, by, by uh, having those amendments in line. So instead we just delete the entire section and replace it uh, completely uh, with the uh, section that's shown on packet page 12, which does four things. Limits the total number of restaurants, formula restaurants to nine, uh, prohibits them from the central conservation area and plaza area historic district. That's what we generally think of as the downtown. Um, what formally was referred to in the ordinance as the downtown plaza area. But unfortunately that, that map, although we all kind of know what the boundaries of that are, that map didn't have boundaries on it. So it would have been uh, hard to enforce if push came to shove. So instead we're replacing that whole map with reference to the um, neighborhoods that are identified in the general plan. And so those are really clearly mapped, really clearly identified in the general plan. Um, it also limits the total number of formula restaurants in the Valley West to a total of six, uh, effectively consolidating the geographic area that was split up between Valley West and Jane's Road, uh, incorporating the total number of restaurants that were allowed for in that zone, but eliminating the geographies except for this prohibition. 
Um, and then as uh, Commissioner, v Vice Chair Mayor pointed out last time, um, some areas are starting to experience mobile food vendors, which this ordinance doesn't, wouldn't have really actually captured uh, because mobile food vending is just defined separately from, um, from restaurants. And so bullet number four uh, limits the uh, ability to o operate and open a mobile food vending formula restaurant unless it's on the same parcel as that foreign bill restaurant. And so that's certainly something I want you to discuss. I took some liberties to propose something uh, there that would allow for you know, some form of mobile food vending, but it would have to be on the exact same site as the, you know, the uh, uh, kitchen basically that, that operated as the um, formula restaurant for that uh, mobile food vendor. Lastly, bullet number B, item number B in this new section, sort of teases apart the difference between an accessory uh, formula re restaurant like Chester's Chicken and an accessory restaurant like a Safeway Deli. And I'll get into that in a little bit. I've got a, a PowerPoint presentation that I wanna get into. Uh, the definitions are omitted. You'll see I made some pretty significant changes to restaurant, cafe, coffee shop. Um, I got kind of uh, bemused by the whole process of trying to define a restaurant, uh, which is a lot harder than you think it is. Um, especially considering that no one gets up, gets in their car, drives down to try and arrive at a restaurant and arrives at anything other than a restaurant. Uh, and likewise, when you walk into a restaurant, you know you're in a restaurant, but to actually define it and segregate it from other types of businesses that sell food was um, a lot more challenging than, than you might think. And I'll walk you through that as well. And then finally, the amendment to the restaurant uh, formula uh, was just amended so that it connects real real uh, explicitly with the code because restaurants are defined as restaurant, cafe, coffee shop. And so we've just replicated that form through the, uh, through the ordinance. I'm gonna take a, take a second um, and ask if there are just general questions about what we've covered so far. And then I wanna go into the, the definition why it's important to be defined the way that it is. Okay, we're looking good to move on. Okay, I'm gonna look for a thumbs up that you're viewing the entire full screen and not the slide advanced screen. Okay, thank you. So restaurant defined. <clears throat> I'm a little ashamed to say that I'm quite proud of this work. And so I hope you don't poke too many holes in it, but if you do, um, then hopefully there are holes for the better. So here's the deal, a retail business, and I'm, I'm walking through sort of the segments of how the current proposed definition is Retail business is one of the first concepts out the gate with this. A retail business could include many different things, including restaurants, grocery delis, pet stores, lots of other places that sell stuff to customers. The next element of the definition is that it's a permanent food facility. And I put this in quotes because in part of my research to try and define restaurant, I figured the health department would be a great resource and they use the California health, uh, California food code for their definitions. Um, surprisingly, the California food code uh, added confusion uh, for the most part, as opposed to um, adding clarity. And when I spoke to our local public health um, uh, official, they informed me that restaurant is not defined in food code because they're not interested in what the thing is, they're interested in how safe the food is handled. But permanent food facility is defined um, and it's segregated from mobile food facilities and other types of food facilities that would have um, you know, food for sale or you know, for, uh, for eating. Um, and so this gives it the permanent uh, type, but interestingly, it includes things like liquor stores, a food facility, if you handle food, your permanent food facility according to the food code. But this is an important definition. And in the new definition of the land use code, I actually refer to the California food code for this definition. Principally selling ready to eat food. Again, I'm referring to the uh, food code for ready to eat food, which is defined in all kinds of gory detail. But again, when I was talking to our local public health official, he told me that 
According to the food code, ready to eat food would encompass things like Papa Murphy's. Now, most people wouldn't pick up a raw Papa Murphy's and eat it, um, but it's prepared in such a way that if that's what you really wanted to do, you could. So ready to eat food is now defined as it's defined in California food code, not as it would be defined in the vernacular. Not many people would consider Papa Murphy's ready to eat. So that helps us get a little closer on the, the Papa Murphy's front. It fills a little bit of the gap there. You still have liquor stores, groceries and delis and restaurants falling into this category because they're retail businesses that are permanent food facilities selling ready to eat food. So we had to dig a little deeper. Our current uh, ordinance and the ordinance proposed uh, brings in this idea of whether the food is eaten on site or off site. Again, it still includes all those business types. and. I just sort of hit on this, and this is where I really want some feedback. I think that the main distinction between all of these other types of um, permanent food facilities that sell ready to eat food, whether you eat it on site or off site, is that when you go to a restaurant, you order it from the menu. So that's an important distinction uh, that um, tries to drive to a specific definition based on the world as we know it now. Now the world is constantly changing. We may, may have to catch up and modify our definition in the future, but right now the difference between walking into a deli, or in, I'm sorry, into a liquor store and getting ready to eat food and walking into a deli or a restaurant and getting ready to eat food is that you actually look at a menu and you tell someone, this is what I want off your menu. And then we added some you know, additional information about, you, know, you can eat it at a, you can order from a counter, it could be table service, could be drive-through. We tried to future-proof a little bit the ordinance by saying and other means of delivery because they may be <clears throat> you know restaurants may deliver food via drone in the future we don't know so this grouping of concepts leads us to you know calving off as small a unit as i can possibly think to calve off grocery delis are still going to fall into the definition of a restaurant here and this was true of our last ordinance as well the one that we're trying to replace here um, the con the concepts don't really fit neatly um, in our in our minds. They're really well defined, but if you define it, you can find um, some overlap in the Venn diagram. And so, so this is this is an important feature when it comes to trying to define formula restaurants, in particular because uh, the existing ordinance is not designed to consider the Safeway Signature Deli as a formula restaurant. So I had to work a little bit on this element of the definition when we started looking at how do we regulate formula restaurants because formula restaurants are a special type of restaurant. So really what it boils down to for the examples that we've seen to date is what, you know, we have a restaurant and it's an accessory to another primary use. So you have a restaurant, it's a smaller subset of a larger building that is not a restaurant. So again, going back to the example of Safeway, Safeway, the entire thing actually is a permanent food facility that sells ready to eat food. Just like a liquor store, Safeway is defined at that higher order level uh, and would have under our current definition potentially been considered, although it's a silly result, a formula restaurant. So with our new definition, we've carved off Safeway, the bigger unit, it's no longer considered a restaurant because it's not, you don't get menu ordered food at Safeway and it's not counter ordered or table delivered. You don't get it through a drive through and et cetera. So basically to cow off things like Chester's chicken, which the council and I think the planning commission also acknowledge we do wanna regulate as a formula restaurant from things like you know, the Murphy's Deli or the Safeway Deli. The restaurant is only a formula restaurant, only regulated as such, if it's, the accessory is a franchise or if the larger unit, even though the larger unit may not be necessarily defined as a restaurant, um, is owned by the same parent company as the restaurant. I can't think of an example of that yet, but I'm just trying to plan for the, the possibility. So if the accessory is not a franchise, in the sense that Signature Deli or Murphy's Deli is not a franchise, it's not a separate franchise, and the primary 
use is not a restaurant, Safeway is not a restaurant, Murphy's is not a restaurant, then it's not counted towards a formula count. That's sub B in the 142-164. So probably overly complex, tried to simplify it here, maybe lots of questions, happy to answer them. And there's a couple of people who are in the um, participants box that may want to comment on the project as well. So again, what we're hoping to get here is a uh, you know, discussion about this ordinance and, and potentially uh, vote to forward PC uh, 2102 to the city council for next Wednesday. Thank you, David. Um, are there any commission questions on this report so far? This all seems very thorough and well thought out, David. I'm wondering if there were any restaurants or food establishments left out there that you felt like weren't covered, but you couldn't quite prune the definition in such a way to include them. Were there any exemptions that you didn't feel were covered? At this point, I think, um, you know, we've covered everything. Um, there are a couple of examples uh, recent, uh, well, sometime within the last 10 years, uh, we had a, you know, big debate about whether or not, um, because the minor theater wanted to serve, you know, food and alcohol, uh, whether that was going to have to be defined as a restaurant or if it was going to be defined as a bar or, you know, was it just an accessory use to the, um, you know, to the minor theater, um, you know, and so, that was a novel concept in a lot of ways, but a lot of movie theaters were moving in that direction to give a richer um, experience, a movie experience, because people, you know, the movie theaters were losing out to Netflix and whatnot. So, you know, the the world is a creative place. I fully anticipate that somebody's going to come up with something that's going to challenge this uh, definition in the future, um, but I, I'm not aware of it at this point. Uh, and to that example, if uh, the minor theater uh, instead of running its own little restaurant, instead contracted with, say, Starbucks to, you know, to run a little coffee shop in there, that would be considered under this definition a formula restaurant and wouldn't be allowed if there were nine others at this point. I also, uh, I forgot, I'm sorry, I'm going to uh, address the issue that Commissioner Vesey Delcock brought up last time, too. Uh, there was a concern about, you know, uh, you know, our local businesses. What if our local businesses, you know, get uh, higher than 11 and then they're regulated like formula restaurants? Um, and I, th I think I mentioned this a little bit in the staff report, but we can't adopt, you know, um, patently, bl uh, patently um, uh, sort of uh, uh, nativist, um, uh, you know, policies into this regulation. We can't say we like this business and not that business because this person lives here and that person doesn't. Um, what you can do if you're concerned that the threshold is too low is that you can recommend that you raise the threshold. And so I think I suggested something like 20 would be an adequate number. None of the restaurants that are currently regulated in the city of Arcata as formula restaurants are, um, you know, fewer than 20. Um, and in fact, none of the restaurants that we're concerned about, you know, the Ramones, the Cheddar Beans, none of those are even close to 11 at this point. Um, but, you know, perhaps they will be at some point. And so if you want to deal with that now and again, future proof this ordinance and say, well, let's just bump it to 20, that would probably be a, an appropriate um, recommendation to the city council as well. Do you know what the lowest number of any of these formula restaurants that we're discussing in this, any of the nine or, or you said you also have a few more that are applying? What kind of numbers are we talking about? The majority of them have thousands of locations. Um, Westside Pizza, it, it was my recollection that I don't have, I don't have, you know, I don't have the absolute facts on this, but it's my recollection that when Westside Pizza first opened, they were actually fewer than 11. And so we didn't count them towards the, the cap. Um, now Westside, I think, has something like 25 or maybe 50. I don't remember the exact number, um, but they're, they're a lot closer to the lower end threshold. But the majority of these, um, you know, have thousands of, of, 
locations across the world. Okay. All right. Well, if um, if there's no more um, questions of the staff report, then we can move on and um, go to. Oh, sorry, Kimberly has something. I was just wondering if it would be prudent to up that number to twenty now, so we don't have to revisit it later, or trying to get some feedback on that. Is it going to be a lot of extra work? to do that now and would it be this too late for later or should we just how does can can we talk about that during deliberations absolutely that'd be great thank you that sounds like a good idea so let's move on to public comment if uh david you do have anybody that wants to speak to this item we have uh, two public members in attendance. If you would please raise your hand to speak if you're interested in speaking um, and we'll let you in. Go ahead and unmute Larry and uh, you're, you're in the meeting. Hey, thank you, David. Uh, thank you commissioners for having a few moments. Can everybody hear me clearly? Yes. All right, thank you. Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, uh, to the commission that uh, we started the proposed project months ago to help complete the uh, portion of the Zanzi uh, Mad River Business Park uh, that was constructed years ago. Um, subsequently, during our process here, Subway has now moved um, or is uh, approved to move to the Uniontown Shopping Center, which is directly across from City Hall. And most definitely, I think most people would feel as though that is part of the central business district uh, where formula restaurants and et cetera was previously not allowed. Also, in addition, um, during the same time frame, because Subway moving from that location, um, they have uh, Domino's is now in the process of moving into the space that Subway vacated. Um, so this uh, has now caused a problem regarding the ordinance and the proposed project that we thought that we were um, pretty much good to go for. Um, we definitely feel that um, the company that we brought forward into Arcata is a very community-based outfit um, great people. They came to Arcata. They have visited um, with David as well. And they provide excellent jobs. Um, they're a s relatively small formula restaurant company in today's standards. Um, although they are moving as swiftly as possible across our country. Um, but they are a a great company and they're of great choice by many and choices are something that are needed for most of our citizens in the community not only here in Arcata but elsewhere and one of the things that I definitely want um, to bring up is that um, the choices that are missing in the community um, cause visitors um, discomfort, students um, discomfort, and the more choices that we actually have, it, it really helps in retaining uh, students in our area. It helps provides good little jobs in our area. Um, and it also uh, is a better experience for those visitors that are traveling through our community to know that they have other choices. There are choices in Valley West right now, but they are limited. And the Zanzi built a very nice project in Arcata. And to be limited in comparison to other property owners, because they were here years ago and they put in a McDonald's or they put in a Carl's Jr. or what have you, it's really tough uh, when, when you've developed something uh, and property that you've owned for many, many years in the heart of Arcata and 
you are limited now on the basis that somebody else put in one of those formula restaurants many years ago. Um, and so I would hope that you keep that in your heart and your minds that the Zanzis poured their heart and soul into the development of that project. And they're looking to develop it out um, and put in something as nice as possible into Arcata. Um, we're merely here to help try to accommodate that and to bring something to Arcata that is going to, um, uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be a wonderful project that many people are going to enjoy, whether they live in Arcata or McKinleyville or visitors that are traveling through the area. And it will most certainly provide wonderful jobs um, for students from Humboldt State University as well. Um, so I hope that you would support amending the resolution um, so that there are other companies that can come forward in the future. Um, I would hope in the Valley West region someday to see companies um, such as maybe a Chick-fil-A or others um, that are preferred by the younger generation. Um, and uh, things like that can make a, a big difference in our community in retaining students here and the retention of uh, medical professionals that don't seem to stick around because we can't seem to provide formula-based um, businesses. So um, I would hope that you would support us. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you, Larry. You're muted, David. I, I, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I don't see anyone, anyone else with their hand raised, so that may be all the public comment we have for now. All right, let's close public comment and uh, move on to commission deliberations. And uh, Kimberly, would you like to propose that idea again for discussion? There you go. Sure. Any uh, responses to Kimberly's question about uh, raising the cap at this stage? And David, I think the follow-up there is, um, would this really hold up this whole process as it would it have to go back and forth a couple more times if we changed something like that uh no it wouldn't you if you wanted to change the number to 20 we would just change it in our recommendation to the to the planning or sign the city council okay all right any other commission comments on that yes judith please Yeah, I'd like to respond to um, Kimberly's suggestion of raising the cap now to 20, something that um, David raised in his excellent report and explanation as well. Um, I would strongly recommend retaining our current cap. The reason for that is that uh, it does seem to reflect both the desires of Arcata residents um, and I, I think probably the city council as it sent this item to us, um, whether it's raised one at a time as desirable businesses apply to um, enter the Arcata market is something that we can address in the future. I think on a case by case basis, raising it to 20 or even to 15 right now would completely defeat the purpose of the ordinance in the first place. Um, can, can I interject one? I, th I think if I understood Commissioner White's uh, proposal, it was not to raise the cap for total number of formula restaurants, but to raise the total number of establishments that a business would have to have in order to qualify as a formula restaurant. That's exactly. So there's two, two numbers in there under the definition okay. of formula restaurant. Okay. Any business that has 11 locations with similar, you know, pattern of branding um, is then considered a formula restaurant. We have like uh, Jitterbean that I think has six or seven locations. 
Um, we have um, Ramones that has six or seven locations. And so they're kind of about midway there to being defined as a formula restaurant. So I think that's that's okay. the number that Commissioner White was referring to. Okay, great. I'm that's I'm exactly I'm, my intention. I'm much relieved. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, and but my response is is similar. Um, at, you know, once we once we get restaurants that are already established here and whose parent companies are growing to the point where, uh, you know, they would be a non-conforming use at that point, I, I think we should deal with it then. I, I think that the rationale behind setting it as low as it was originally set was to really retain the sense that the multi-site businesses that would operate in Arcata um, would still be somewhat local businesses and that our current number of 12 act actually does that pretty effectively. Um, and if we have an expanding business that that suddenly has 11 and keeping the Arcata location open um, would re require and and in conformity would require changing that cap i think we should uh do it then but we're not there yet um i don't think that it would be a great deal of trouble um i i think that the record of of why we would want to do that is going to be pretty well established after this hearing but that there's no need to do it now um no nobody is really pushing that limit at the moment and um yeah, I'd, I'd like to see it where it is. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that. To, to be clear, I was just wanting to have that conversation. That was okay. it. Not Great. one way or the other, but just to hear deliberations as we did. Great. Yeah. I, 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 I think that for the time being, we're, we're fine with that number 12 and there, there's no, reason in, in particular, I think it, it's, it was very, fairly arbitrary to have chosen 12 in the first place. Uh, but since nobody is really pushing that right now, um, I, I'd like to keep it where it is. Um, and I, I'd also like to really commend um, David, Director Loya, for a, a really um, well-crafted um, set of rationales for this weirdly complex set of issues, um, including using that that um, set of definitions from um, from the from the state, which I think solves a lot of our problems. So um, yeah, but the discussion of, you know, should we raise that cap past 12 now? It's a good thing to talk about. I don't see that it would accomplish anything that we need to accomplish or save a whole lot of trouble later. Thank you, Judith. John Barstow. Well, I agree with Judith uh, on two issues. Uh, first, I think uh, uh, Dave's done a, a very nice job on this uh, 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 ordinance. Uh, also, I, I can't see any reason to uh, raise the uh, cap on, on uh, <clears throat> you know, how many uh restaurants it takes to qualify as as a, a pattern restaurant <clears throat> um i th think that well one of the 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 reasons for the initial uh the initial ordinance was to avoid uh proliferation of cookie cutter uh businesses and i think that if you jump from 11 or 12 to to 20 uh, you're in a whole different, a whole different league, really. Uh, uh, so I, I would favor leaving it as it is. Uh, also, uh, uh, Larry Debaney had some interesting comments, but I think uh, some of the things that he was suggesting would require actually ch going back and changing the original, original ordinance and and. Uh, uh changing the uh the rationales behind the original ordinance uh 
One thing I, I do question is the limit on the number of uh, pattern restaurants in uh, <clears throat> uh, Valley West. Uh, you know, Valley West looks to me like the perfect place to have them. And uh, if, if we sequestered uh, the pattern restaurants to Valley West, uh, I think that'd be appropriate. So although I, I wouldn't recommend raising the, the total number allowed in the city, um, I, I think we might uh, look at uh, eliminating or, or changing the uh, allowable number in the Valley West area. Okay, thank you, John. Who's next? Please, Kimberly. Um, I just wanted to say that there's actually nine jitter being in, so not seven. There are nine right now. So they are close to the cap, um, which is 11, right? Yeah, I like John's comments regarding Valley West and the appropriateness of locating some of those restaurants in that area. But John, were you proposing revisiting that now or just eyeing that as a area for discussion in the future? Oh, just uh, a thought to throw out there for discussion if anybody else wants to address it. Judith. Yeah, I would like to address that. Um, Part of the reason for that maximum number for Valley West um, goes back to both past and current discussions that somehow Valley West is um, Arcata's sacrifice zone. And that whereas nobody wants a formula restaurant down on the plaza, that somehow it's okay to have one after another chain fast food restaurant in Valley West. And um, it, it, it actually was brought forth as um, a little bit of a social justice issue um, where, where people in Valley West had really complained that um, they're, they're inundated with, with chain restaurants and, and fast food and that they actually um, wanted that cap um, to remain. Um, the, and I would also point out that one thing about the revised version of this ordinance is that for the first time, it would actually allow formula restaurants to go into places like um, Sunny Bray Shopping Center, um, which would not have been allowed before, if I'm correct. Um, and, and some other areas of Arcata that, that didn't have numbers associated with them, um, rather than that they should proliferate um, in Valley West. So I, 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 I actually like the numbers the way they are in the proposed revised ordinance. And I think that there, there, there is a sound rationale from that in terms of neighborhood concerns in those areas. Uh, speak up, anybody that wants in. Judith, are you, are you suggesting that um, one of those formula restaurants would be more appropriately located in Sunny Bray versus the Valley no. West? No, no, that's not what I'm suggesting at all. Um, but the the idea that, you know, because Valley West has so many visitor serving um, businesses, uh, the motels, et cetera, et cetera, um, that we should continue to allow more chain restaurants to go into that area um, is is actually something that a, a number of neighborhood residents there, um, whether they're here or not tonight, uh, have objected to in the past. And 
I also think that um, the argument that our uh, one member of the public who came to speak uh, brought up that that someone who is developing a site in that area uh, should have the right to invite a chain restaurant into that area is um, it's fine. If somebody else wants to close, they can do that. But the idea of, of continuing to add more formula restaurants into that area is actually something that uh, has, has been extensively debated in the past. We're reopening it now. Um, and I'd really like to keep those numbers as they are. Um, if we want variety and um, diversity and more food in that area, uh, we are blessed with a world of food entrepreneurs in Arcata, and I would love to provide them with a fighting chance of uh, getting and being able to afford a lease in, in that area themselves. Um, and that's another um, one of the background purposes of, 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 of this ordinance, and I think it's well served with the numbers that we have in the um, re revision draft that um, Director Loya has sent to us. Thank you. Um, Director Loya, can you remind me, um, there's six allowed now in Valley West. We're, is that number the same as it was previously? Currently there's five allowed in the Valley West and then there's one allowed on Jane's Road. The old Denny's was one of the original locations. Um, the way that the ordinance was originally adopted um, wasn't based on any sort of, um, you know, planning principle or, or, you know, some other analysis. We essentially said, look, there's five in Valley West right now. There's one on Jane's road. There's one in this area, one in that area, two in that area. So those are the locations. We're going to call it good. You, you can't. So yeah. we kind of took the, took, took the low road in a sense. We took the easy route and said, we're not going to, you know, try and define where these things should actually be based on any kind of policy. We're just going to allow them to be where they're at now kind of like a step up from existing non-conforming. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's the reason why uh, they were established where they were established. And the the Denny's location, you know, is basically it's permanently converted. Um, it hasn't been a Denny's in decades. It's in some ways a terrible location for a restaurant. It's sort of off the beaten path. You do have the benefit of having a, re a I'm sorry, uh, a hotel right next door. Um, and I think that was the old model. You had a hotel and then a restaurant next door, but that model is less, um, you know, less important in today's market. Um, and so the discussion, the deliberations that the council had were to consolidate, you know, the six that were available in that larger region. Um, and this is kind of a nuance. It's really not germane to the topic because in some ways, because again, there wasn't a planning principle or a policy decision that was made for establishing these locations, but the neighborhoods and the business districts, uh, the neighborhoods defined in the general plan and the business districts defined in this ordinance don't overlap well. And the neighborhood in the Valley West actually incorporates that James Road area um, as defined in the general plan. So there's lots of, you know, sort of underlying reasons or rationale why this would be a, a, an appropriate shift <clears throat> to recognize the existing condition. Yeah. I do want to note for the uh, chair also that there's a public member who raised their hand after you closed the public comment. I don't know if they weren't able to figure out how to uh, raise their hand or or if they just heard something that you know struck their fancy and they wanted to talk about it. But I wanted to let you know, since you can't see the people, that there is somebody who wants to speak and you've closed the public comment. It's totally to your discretion whether to open it. If you don't open it, I will mention to this person that um, the Economic Development Committee is going to take this up on uh, June 1st, and the City Council will take it up on June 2nd um, if a recommendation moves forward. So if you don't get an opportunity to speak tonight, you can certainly come speak at those meetings. Uh, you know, personally, I would be interested in hearing them speak to the subject if that's what they're here for. If they're here for anything else, we can cut them off. And is that okay with everybody? Is, do you, people want to hear? Yeah. Brendan, I've let you into the meeting. Please unmute. 
Go ahead, Brandon, you're on. Good evening. I'm uh, placing my call in, or thank you for letting me speak. Uh, two, two items that I'd like to make a point of. One is that the Mad River uh, Business Park there has a lot of restrictive uh, uh, building requirements as to the way the lot and the property was developed to uh, maintain with the requirements of a 100-year floodplain. Hey, Brandon, can I just interrupt for one moment, please? Uh, we're on a specific item, uh, item about the formula restaurants. Are you calling to speak to that? Yeah, so the, the okay. second portion of this is that the, the business that we're proposing is a smaller slated business that doesn't take a lot of area that would fit nicely in that park. But at the same time, it is more of a um, sought after business that's not necessarily going to fail in regards to another pandemic. So it's not necessarily a heavily formula restaurant, but it's, it's slated to where you're good, they're going to keep employees employed through the pandemic crisis because it's a drive up type business. And that's all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you very much, Brennan. Judith, please. Okay, um, I'm, I'm actually speaking as someone who was just over there um, at the Mad River Business Park about a uh, half an hour ago. Um, <laughs> And I would also like to point out with regard to that, especially, I believe that there's a development agreement there that has some pretty strict design and development um, criteria. Uh, and I was part of the planning commission um, when we deliberated on those in absolutely enormous detail. And if I do recall that there was no provision in any of those criteria which the city obligated itself to enforce by building them into the development agreement rather than allowing the private development to en enforce its own design standards. Um, and I can't imagine how a, a drive up uh, restaurant would even comply with those criteria. I don't wanna go into this now, but um, you know, we when we when we adopt very detailed, restrictive um, design criteria enforceable by the city, um, we do need to make sure that the city is enforcing them. So, um, and yeah, that's that's what you get in response to reopening the public comment on a particular location. Right. Um, I, I I would like to to um, move fairly quickly to uh, moving to approve the um, item this evening and sending it on to the city council. Well, um, every, anybody's welcome to make a motion at any point if you get a second and we vote, we can move on. Um, Kimberly has some additional comment. I would like to briefly throw out that um, if we were to jump up the uh, Valley West numbers, for example, as has been suggested, um, that feels like a topic that should happen down the road if there's pressure on Valley West to have more formula restaurants it would be a notice meeting on that item mm -hmm. and Valley West can show up at it and tell us how they feel. If we did it tonight, it feels like it would be just way too abrupt and um, not the topic at hand. Um, Kimberly, do you want to comment more and anybody else? Go ahead, please. You pretty much covered it already. So I just wanted to, um, piggyback, I guess, on what Judith was saying and with regards to Valley West, um, I would like to see a cap um, because we are inundated 
And I also would like to mention that because we're often the first place that students and perspective. You're muted. By adding more formula restaurants and not doing a cap out in Valley West, being that we are often the first place that perspective students and families and tourists see, we kind of lose the flavor of Arcata. Um, and if that is the first place they say, I'd, I'd like it to be a little more representative of Arcata and adding more formula restaurants really doesn't represent that. That's just what I wanted to say. I'll also uh, note just for the planning commission that the city council actually specifically deliberated this and identified the cap of six as a, a policy matter uh, before they forwarded uh, the interpretation to you. So you could certainly recommend something different. Um, um, your you know separate uh, body that makes recommendations, and if you had had a recommendation to change that, I just wanted to let you know that. Um, and then also, chair for uh, for your edification, um, the uh, previous speaker has raised their hand again, so I don't know if you want to reopen public dialogue again. This person did have an opportunity to speak previously. Thank you, David. Um, I think we were on the verge of a motion, unless anybody else would like to speak. I, um, I'm not interested personally in hearing a second time from a speaker. Um, so, um, I'd like to make a motion to oh. approve. Please, Scott. Yes, I'd like to make a, a motion to approve this as presented to the Planning Commission. Okay, do we have a second on that? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Uh, Commissioner White? Aye. Commissioner Davies? Aye. Commissioner Figueroa? Aye. Commissioner Barstow? Aye. Vice Chair Mayor? Aye. And Chair Tegney? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, thank you, staff, for your homework on this item. And we will move on. Um, we have no business items on the agenda. And so we're down to correspondence and communications. Um, I have a question of staff on correspondence here. Is there any uh, talk about in-person meetings in the horizon? <laughs> Everyone is itching to get back into in-person meetings. I think we've been uh, fielding this, uh, this question numerous times and, um, uh, and over the past couple of weeks. And so right now uh, we are, you know, looking to develop a, um, you know, formal response, a formal plan for, for how we'd get back to uh, public meetings uh, in person. I know that, uh, you know, for some people, you know, they just can't attend on Zoom. And so uh, they're anxious to get back to that. Uh, but at this point, the city doesn't have the uh, technological uh, facilities to, uh, to provide the type of access the state requires if you do in-person meetings. Um, the state requires that you still provide a remote access portal for individuals and that you actually broadcast over some sort of, you know, Zoom or YouTube or something, some way for someone to uh, remotely log into um, that meeting and be able to have an expansive view as if they were in the room uh, at the same time. Currently, our technology, our camera system is set up so that, you know, you can zoom back out or you can see individuals at a at a, at a time um, but it doesn't allow for that instantaneous simultaneous interaction um, so we've still got to figure that out before we go back to public uh, public meetings in-person meetings um, and then the second thing is that the um, you know the the various um, you know regulatory frameworks that we're under in terms of you know our obligations to our employees and to the public um, they don't all line up in terms of their, their formal recommendations on how and whether and what you do if you're in person. And so until we get some of those details sorted out and we make sure that, you know, we're going to satisfy everything from Cal OSHA to, you know, the executive orders, um, we really can't do an in-person meeting um, at this time. So I think, you know, my hope is that we'll, we'll be over, over the next couple of months, we'll be able to, you know, figure out some of these details and start getting a plan for uh, meetings in person. Um, but at this time, we we just can't. So um, okay. I apologize for that. 
some months away, maybe in the fall or so, huh? Um, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Anybody else for correspondence? Judith, please. Hi, since since you raised that topic, um, I I'm actually really hoping I don't I I know there's going to be a, a time when the city council might be bringing this up um, themselves. I'm really hoping that even after we go back to in person meeting, that we'll still have Zoom or a Zoom like thing. Um, so that people don't have to trek all the way down to City Hall in order to um, either participate or observe. Um, you know, right, right, right now, the ability to, or pre-COVID, the, the ability to observe remotely required that you have cable TV, um, which fewer and fewer people actually have. And, and so, you know, when we do go back to that option, if there's any way to, you know, advocate to keep it open on a Zoom like function as well, that that I think would be terrific. Um, yeah. Uh, I additionally it would allow commissioners who are traveling to be able to attend meetings. So I do think that would be good. I believe Commissioner Figueroa joined when I did and um, I haven't even been to an in-person planning commission meeting yet. So um, really looking forward to getting to see all of you in person and have that sort of direct human interaction as soon as it's possible. Yeah. Don't, don't know what you're missing, buddy. Well, the other part of it is the interaction with the greater public and, you know, how many people speak and how they present. And, you know, there's just a lot of, in-person dynamics that we've certainly been missing. Um, anything else from anybody? Commissioner White has. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to concur with Judith that I feel like doing Zoom while we are still doing in-person will open up for families who have young children, um, being that we don't provide any on-site um, childcare, it would allow parents uh, who are working, coming home from work to still be with their family and still be part of the meetings. So um, I hope that we can facilitate that. Okay, well stated everybody. Is that it? Um, I'll just uh, put out there that if you haven't been contacted by the city manager's office to date, uh, we'll be reaching out to you soon to try and schedule a, a city council planning commission joint meeting sometime probably in June. Um, so uh, be on the lookout for that and I'll provide you more information as I as I hear it, but you should hear from our clerk soon. Um, the topics uh, we'll cover will likely be the strategic and fill redevelopment program, update on that and um, you know sharing out uh, the public engagement that we've been doing. Um, and then also to talk about the uh, art plan uh, that my colleague Dilo and uh, Gillen uh, have done such a nice job of pulling together. Um, so those uh, those will be coming up. Uh, it'll be a nice nice change of pace. Unfortunately, uh, for our last conversation, it'll probably still be on Zoom, but mm -hmm. provide an opportunity for folks to talk about that. Okay. I think that's all I have from the staff level. All right. Pleasure seeing you all. We'll adjourn. Thank you.